So I want to share with you the five cold hard truths about what's keeping you from growing and scaling your brokerage. These are the lessons that I've learned as a brokerage owner myself when I started my brokerage back in 2020 during pandemic with a handful of agents. I hired over 360 agents since. And I want to share with you the five truths that I really truly believe that um, if you really fix those things, will help you to really grow and scale your business and take it to the next level. So truth number one, your personal production is holding your brokerage back. And I know it's a difficult one. And I know exactly how important it is, especially in the early stages of your brokerage life to produce. Um, I remember my first two and a half years as a brokerage owner, I had no choice but to produce. I had to pay the bills. I had to pay the expenses. The payroll. Um, I remember very vividly about four years ago, where I was looking at my numbers, and at that time I think we we're hovering over between like 15 and 20 agents, and those agents were doing about four to five deals per month. And I was also looking at my personal production, we we're doing about four to five deals myself personally. I was doing, and I was looking at the correlation every month, 15 agents doing four or five deals, and I'm doing four or five deals myself. And the aging calendar was not really moving. It's not growing. And because of that, the number of transactions were not growing either. So I had to make a decision. It was a very difficult decision because closing two, three, four, five transactions a month was important to me, right? Not only professionally, but also personally. But I had to make a decision in order for us to continue to grow as a brokerage. I had to grow the agent count. And I also had to spend more time in developing those agents and also creating a better environment for those agents to grow and flourish their business. So one of the biggest reasons, and this is just from my experience and also my experience talking to the brokerage owners on a daily basis, one of the main reasons why your brokerage is, is stagnant or it's not growing is because we put a lot of our emphasis on personal production. And I think we need to figure this out sooner or later, that in order for our business to grow, and I'm talking about business, I'm not talking about personal production, I'm talking about the business, it has to be done through people, it has to be done through systems, right? So give you an example, a few, few months ago, we had um, our mastermind here, client mastermind here in Scottsdale, Arizona, we had about 40 of our clients in a room, and one of the first questions I asked them was, um, how many here consider themselves a business owner? And I would say probably everybody in that room raised their hand, right? But my follow-up question was, all right, if God forbid something happens to you tomorrow, would your business survive? And only maybe one or two people raised their hand. In reality, if you really think about it, we don't really own a business. Business owns us, right? And essentially what we're doing is we're running owner-dependent business. So if our production is not there, is this business going to be able to sustain itself? Can even survive? So the answer is no. We need to figure this out as quickly as possible because we cannot continue for the rest of our lives, go out on the listing appointments, show homes, be involved with buyer and seller transactions. Ultimately, we have to graduate to the next level, which is owning the business through people and systems. The second cold hard truth is all about agent recruiting 101. And when I started my real estate brokerage, um, I hired a coach. Um, and again, it was during the pandemic and um, I needed to get that agent count going. And I remember the time that I used to dedicate um, to recruiting, what I did is that coach said, hey, you have to let call call agents. And uh, I remember when I started my real estate career back in 2013, that's what I did for about three years. I built my real estate business by cold calling expireds, cancels for sale by owners. But in all honesty, I did not really enjoy that process at all. I felt it was a grind. So when I started calling agents, even though I did have some conversations and even though I, I scheduled some meetings and I brought some agents in, I felt like it was really single dimensional. And what I mean by that is the fact that if I was not call calling, which for me, it was tough because I was still doing personal production. I was managing the brokerage. I was in charge of compliance. I was doing the marketing myself. There was just a lot of things that I was doing, right? If I was not call calling, I was not talking to the agents. And if I'm not talking to the agents, I don't have the opportunity to meet with them. 
And here's another thing that I know is about cold calling. Most of the agents will most likely tune you out, right? They will not be interested. The ones that will be interested, let's say some of them will actually meet with you. Because you met with them and because they're not even really serious about switching brokerages, they're on top of the funnel, if you will, the whole nurturing process takes months and months and months and months to develop to the point where they actually will consider joining your brokerage. I didn't have that much time, right? So instead, I had to figure out in a way where I can still produce, I can still dedicate 60, 70, 80% of my time in, in selling real estate, but having that additional 20% or so and having those agents actually come to me through marketing, right? Think about it. When we are generating buyer leads, we have the marketing systems that are working. We're generating seller leads, we have the marketing systems working, right? We have a consistent flow of those buyers and sellers coming in. That's how we have the healthy pipeline. That's how we're gonna be able to close deals on a monthly basis consistently. It's the same concept, it's the same logic that is applied to recruiting agents. You have to have at least one or two, ideally three marketing systems that allows you as a brokerage owner to consistently attract agents into your world. And that's exactly what I did the last six months of the year for myself is the fact that I developed these marketing systems where those agents were raising hand and wanted to learn more about the brokerage versus me constantly going out there and chasing those agents. So I transitioned from a, a one dimensional approach, which is cold calling agents, chasing those agents to a multi-dimensional approach where I had several different marketing methods in play that were constantly generating me the agent opportunities that I was able to take advantage of and bring about 75 agents. I think we brought in the first 12 months into business. By the way, I have a video that I've done not so long ago in, in showing exactly how we're able to uh, bring in over 360 agents in the last four years using these marketing systems. So you probably want to check it out. It's right here. You can click on it. All right, truth number three, your brokerage needs unique value proposition and the brand name. All right, so the way we stand out right now in 2024 is by creating a brand. Our brand is our number one currency. Like I have an opportunity every single day to talk to the brokerage owners and they're all have the same exact issue. The fact that most of the agents don't know they exist. The fact that most of the agents don't know they're actually looking to partner up with these agents. And the reason being is because they're not really developing or promoting their brand. And their messaging is not that good. There's a bunch of things about the tools and resources and CRMs and all of that stuff. But in reality, it's not really resonating with the type of an agent they're looking to bring on. So one of the key things that we did from essentially day one, and trust me, it took years for us to develop the brand that we have right now. And by the way, we are not anywhere close where we have to be and will be in the future, right? But it's constantly working and promoting our brand, creating that omnipresence in our agent community. So this way, more and more agents know, A, first and foremost, we exist, and B, we're actually looking to partner up with these agents. Right? How many agents in your community know that you are looking to hire agents into your brokerage? How many of them know what is your unique selling proposition or value proposition that you're offering to them? So that's something that you want to be able to create. And we create that through several different channels, right? Social media is one of them. Email is another. Uh, job boards is, is, is something else that we do. And then on top of it, we invite agents to our dancing classes and everything else that comes with it, right? So ultimately what we want to do is we want to create the omnipresence where no matter where that agent turns, they see your name, they see your company, they see what you're about, what your brand is all about, and then ultimately what your value proposition is to the agent. And that's what you want to achieve eventually. Now, it takes time to do so. But you as a company, you cannot be a closet brokerage owner, right? You as a company, you want to make sure that you're the forefront in your community and know the fact that there are agents out there that are looking for a company such as you. So the ability of, of clearly articulating your value proposition to the agents, the ability for you to be able to present and promote your brand to the agent community is really going to take your business to the next level and help you to separate and differentiate yourself from the other brokerages in town. Cold hard truth number four. 
and that has to do with the multiple revenue streams. So most of the brokerage owners, unfortunately, do not take advantage of the internal as well as the external revenue streams that allow the brokerage to continue to grow um, financially. And let me let me let me kind of expand on that. Internally, what I mean by that is there are still brokerages out there that pretty much generate most of our business from splits. They're not charging monthly fees. They're not charging onboarding fees. Uh, they're not charging E&O or risk management fees, right? It's strictly splits. So if that agent is closing deals, they're making money. If that agent's got an off month or maybe an off year, they're not making that much money. In fact, they're losing money. So the way we structure um, our brokerage and the way we help other clients of ours structured as well is the fact that in addition to the splits, in addition to the transaction fees, you got to have monthly fees. You have to have onboarding fee when the agent joins, right? You have to have a risk management fee. For instance, in our situation, a risk management fee is $600 on the first closing uh, for that agent in our company. And that's for 12 months. We collect anywhere between forty dollars to $50,000 in the risk management fees on a yearly basis. Now, these are the internal revenue drivers. The external revenue drivers are the partnerships, right? These are verticals or ancillary businesses that you definitely want to be part of or have an ownership in. That's mortgage, that's title, that's insurance, that's property management. All of those companies are incorporated or interdependent or connected, if you will, to the real estate brokerage. The real estate brokerage is, is ultimately the engine, right? It's the one who actually originates and generates the opportunity that then eventually will flow to the mortgage side, insurance side, and title side, and et cetera. So owning those verticals or ancillaries, it's huge. Like I remember in my situation in year number two, we started a mortgage company and it was tough. It was difficult. You know, we still were in a refired boom. Uh, most of the loan officers were not interested in joining, you know, up and coming startup mortgage company, but I didn't give up. It took me a year to find a good quality mortgage loan officer. It took me another six to 12 months to get it profitable. Same thing with the title and escrow company. It took us almost two years to start generating any meaningful income from that relationship alone. It takes time, but when it starts going, right, you start generating 10, 15, 20, $30,000 a month over a month. And that adds up to what you're currently doing with the brokerage, because ultimately that's something that you can reinvest back into the real estate brokerage, right? You can bring in better people. You can provide better tools, better support for your agents and continue to grow that engine. Again, the more agents you have, the more transactions you're gonna be able to close, and some of those transactions are gonna end up with your verticals or your ancillary businesses. So truth number five, you're not building your personal production, AKA job, you're building an asset. As I alluded to, as I said in the early stages of this video, right? We can focus our energy on personal production, and make pretty good money doing so. Or we can spend that energy on building a business. Building a business by bringing in people. And I'm not just talking about real estate agents. Real estate agents are the engine. It's a must. If you really wanna grow as a brokerage, you gotta bring in the real estate agents. But you also gotta able to attract the right staff members, the right management, the right people that will help you to manage these agents. You see, as we grew, I brought in more and more right people into place. Was it all perfect? Absolutely not. I remember hiring somebody who was a, a complete disaster. In fact, several people that I hired were a complete disaster, right? And I felt like I wasted a lot of my time and energy and obviously the resources came with it. But you cannot have a permanent PTSD because of that. In order for us to continue to grow, we gotta bring in the right people. And those people have to be on the right seats of that particular bus. That's called your company. Right. So remember, like I talked to you guys about the fact that most of the brokerage owners there are a lot of brokerage owners out there. In fact, per our stats, I think there are about 100,000 or so real estate brokerages in U.S. alone. And 80 percent of them have seven or less agents. So that means that, again, that the brokerage owner is wearing multiple hats. So how can we get from that stage one, which is owner dependent business to the next stage, which is buying back your time? business. And we do that by bringing in people. 
and then having the systems to support those people. And then generating the capital, generating the income that we can now redeploy and have the third stage of our business endeavor, which is multiplication, which means that you are investing in income producing assets that will generate hopefully lots of wealth for you and your family for many years to come. Look, I know facing these realities head on, it's not easy. If this would be easy, everybody would do it. It takes a lot of mindset shifting, right? It takes a lot of behavior changing. But think about it, life is too short. Are we gonna be able to take big risks, be bold with our actions, don't settle for mediocrity, take on challenges head on, and overcoming all of the adversities and challenges are coming our way and creating something of a value a business that you truly own, a business that you can actually sell, or do you want to be in that hamster wheel year over year doing most of the production and not seeing that light at the end of the tunnel? You make the decision. It's your life to live. But if you're going to live one life, live it to the fullest on a real business that will help you to buy back your time and help you to create a legacy for your kids and your loved ones. See you next time.